Hi friends. Kind of a cold, windy day here today in Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico on the north shore of Lake Chapala. And um, I'm getting tired of hanging around the house. So I've got cabin fever. I guess that's better than COVID, but cabin fever it is. Um, so thought I'd just go for a ride today. Let's go. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. But first, I thought I'd show you what's going on out here on the shore. Like I said, it's kind of a cold, windy day out there. But let's go see. Cormorants. It's too windy to fish, but looks like a good day for cleaning and preening. Bye. Bye, honey. Where are you going? Going for a ride. Oh, okay. Make a video. Yeah. See okay. You, see you later. Okay, bye. You go on that today? No, the camera shakes too much. Where are we going this? Well, I must be crazy. I was sitting at home very nice breeze coming off of the lake. I know I characterize it as windy and cold, but cold here is 70. <laughs> Sitting there at home, very pleasant place to be, having cabin fever, which got me out into this traffic. Well, you know, I said something about traffic here a couple of videos ago, and. Somebody from California gave me a bad time, like, oh, you think that's traffic? Well, I've lived in California. I know about traffic, traffic, but I don't live in California anymore. I live in this little town on the North Shore of Lake Chapala called Ahihik, population about 8,000. And um, yeah, we call this traffic. Oh, guy behind me honked. I, I'm old. I didn't notice that the light turned green. And I'm talking to you. Well, anyway. He'll get over it as soon as we get up here. We didn't lose any time. We can catch up. Seem to be doing some construction there on the sidewalk in front of Walmart. 
A lot of activity going on around here. Casino there on the left, I know it's a casino because I went in there and you can't put money into a slot machine. You gotta buy a card with credits on it. And the reason I know it's a casino is because it took me about three minutes to lose 200 pesos. Construction of a new residential place with uh, businesses down below there. Traffic, yeah, we were talking about traffic. Um, back in April, when everything was shut down, the few times I went out without this traffic reminded me of 15, 20 years ago when we didn't have this kind of traffic all the time. The problem with traffic here going through Ajijic and La Floresta is that there's only one road from east to west, and it's the uh, Carretera. This is the main, the main highway here. You can drop down into a street that's uh, cobblestone street, but they're one way and narrow, and sometimes even they get blocked up because people try to avoid this stop and go here on the main road. Most people are wearing their masks. I see a guy over there not wearing his mask with his cowboy hat and his boots. Oh no, oh, yeah, I apologize. I apologize. He was wearing a mask. It happened to be the same color as the rest of his face. And he wasn't wearing boots. He was wearing tennis shoes. Um, I should apologize to him for that. Uh, there's an OXO down here. You can pay your phone bills and your uh, electric bill at uh, an OXO. OXO is a convenience store like 7-Eleven, Plaid Pantry if you're from the Pacific Northwest. O-X-X-O. I asked a Mexican friend when I was first down here how you pronounce that. O X X O. And he said, Well, we usually just say 7 <laughs> Eleven. Panino's restaurant there, uh, I claim, and I have experience, the best service anywhere in a restaurant I've ever been. I'm going to pull into the OXO down here and uh, pay my electric bill. I was thinking about what I said about Pernino's having the best service in any restaurant I've ever been to. And I say that because it's very, very good service here, but I got to thinking about that. The best service I've ever had in a restaurant was at the Emerald Princess in San Francisco. A waiter stands behind each guest at the table, and if you lay your fork down, you get a clean one. If you have a drink of water, it's a sip. It's refilled. A waiter for each guest standing behind you taking care of every little thing. You wipe your face with the napkin, put it back in your lap, you get a clean one. The Emerald Princess. Looking out the window, you see Coit Tower. Well, where are we? We're in, uh, this is called Mirasol. Uh, Mirasol is between um, San Antonio and Rivera de Pilar. Rivera de Pilar. Um, let me talk about the difference between Chapala and Ahihik and Hakotapec. Um, people sometimes get um, uh, questioned me about what 
uh, is the difference between the city of Chapala and Chapala the lake and uh, Ahihik and how does that all work? Chapala is a city, a pueblo, but Suidad, but it's also uh, like in the United States, it would be a county. So Chapala is a county and the next county to the west is Hokotepec. But inside of that county, there is the town of Chapala and the town of um, Ahihik. And then within those, there are uh, smaller places that would be like districts in the United States. So um, you have a county, and the word for county in Spanish is condado. Curiously enough, that's the same word as for padlock. County or padlock, both condado. And you'll have to talk to somebody else that knows more Spanish than I about how that works. I have to talk to someone who is up on Spanish entomology. No, wait, not entomology. Entomology is bugs. Etymology, the study of language? Eh, well, don't quote me. Anyway, we're going towards the town of Chapala, which is population about 26,000. Um, Ahihik is in what would, in the United States, be called the county of Chapala. Um, and all of the rest of those little towns from Chapala all the way to Hokotepec um, are pretty much just, it's, it's uh, developed all the way. There's no real break between San Antonio and La Floresta uh, or La Floresta and uh, Ahihik. Anyway, that's the, that's the structure. Chapala and Hokotepec are counties as well as towns. And of course, we know what uh, the lake is. That's where the water is. Don't make me explain that again. I actually got that question one time. Is Ahihik in Lake Chapala? No, it's right beside of it on the North Shore. We have gotten into Chapala. Hamasia, Guadalajara there on the right. There are at least two that I know of, maybe more. They're a chain all over um, this part of Mexico. The one in Ahihik is open 24 hours a day. I don't know if this one in Chapala is or not. That place right there on the left is the immigration office um, where people go to get their immigration situations sorted out. As we go over this little hill, I'll try to turn the camera sideways just a little bit so you can get a view of how close we are to the lake. All of these houses on the right are lakefront properties. Right here, I'm going to turn it over there. See, we're right by the water. Coffee shop right here. Um, they grind their own beans. And right up here on the right, is my attorney's office, Spencer McMullen, right there. And we're approaching the main intersection in Chapala. Somebody asked me about Santander Banks the other day. Um, there's one right there on the right, the red building. Oh, the motorcycle cop directing traffic right here. He's the guy that stopped me a few years ago. 
Uh, I'll tell you that story in a minute. Right here, the red building on the right is the Municipal Palace, City Hall of Chapala. And when I first came down here, that was called the Hotel Lido. It was for sale for $800, I mean $800,000. And I thought it would be really cool to own a hotel. So when I went back to Oregon, talked to some people who had money, because I didn't. And uh, we were going to buy it. And we got real close to making an offer and found out that the city of Chapala had taken it to make it City Hall instead of the old Hotel Lido. 26-room hotel and its claim to fame, uh, historically, was that during the uh, uh, War of Independence, Pancho Villa had stayed there. I don't think for a long time, maybe just overnight, but that was its claim to fame. That motorcycle cop back there, it's, this is about, I don't know, maybe nine, ten years ago, my neighbor got sick, and he had been seeing a doctor over here in Chapala, so I was taking him to the doctor. And um, that cop was right in that intersection, directing traffic, and I kind of went through uh, after he was done wanting me to, <laughs> and he blew his whistle, and I stopped, and he came running over, and while he was coming to the van, I told my neighbor, who wasn't sick enough to throw up, but I told him, hey, grab that bag, and when the cop's talking to me, throw up. So he did, and the cop came to the window and was giving me a bad time, and I said, I'm taking my friend to the doctor, and just as I said that, my friend went a couple of times really big in the bag, and um, the cop said, go, 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 go. <laughs> so... If you get stopped by a motorcycle cop who's directing traffic, uh, you might keep that in mind. Uh, I should caution you that it only works one time for each intersection or each motorcycle cop, though. Uh, you might, um, I should make a video about different directions that uh, cops give you when they're directing traffic. And some of them... Uh, are a little different than what we, uh, being from the United States, would intuitively understand them to mean. There are actually some uh, questions on the Mexican driver's license exam about this. Uh, I got in trouble once, not a lot of trouble, just some fun trouble, uh, up in Guadalajara on the uh, Periferico, that's like a freeway that goes all the way around the big city. Uh, it's like uh, in Dallas, they call it the Beltline. Anyway, um, I'm on the Periferico and I got off, but it wasn't the exit I thought it was. So I just went on the lateral. That's the little road alongside the freeway until I could get back on. And as I got back on, there was an officer there with his car, two guys, uh, two officers, uh, talking to another car. And as I went past, he did this motion like putting his hands down towards the ground. And I thought he meant slow down. Well, I'm on what in California we call the speed ramp that you speed up to merge your speed along with the traffic you're merging with on the freeway. So it didn't compute to me. I, he's telling me to slow down. Um, I'm speeding up and looking behind to merge with the traffic. Well, turns out that he jumped in his car and chased me, <laughs> pulled me over. And turns out he didn't mean slow down. He meant stop. And that, as a matter of fact, is a question on the Mexican driver's license test what that gesture means. Uh, that story got a little more interesting. I didn't speak much Spanish, but there was a guy with me who spoke a little, and um, the cop kept explaining to us that we had disrespected him was the problem. I had my driver's license, put it in his shirt pocket, and told us to follow him. So we got back on the freeway and followed um, a couple of kilometers, 
got off driving through a barrio, a very not nice neighborhood, and um, starting to get a little worried about, okay, this is where we get taken out of the car and he takes the car or worse. But um, having been in Mexico now for nearly 20 years, I wouldn't uh, think that today, but I did at that time, being inexperienced in all of this. He never stopped. We got back on the freeway and went back towards where he had originally uh, seen me. And uh, we're on the other side of the freeway now, going the other direction, and we pull off, and his fellow officer, who hadn't jumped in the car and chased me, um, came out of the bushes with the ticket book. And it finally dawned on me that the reason we're having a problem here is because um, the guy that chased me down, didn't have the ticket book to threaten me with. It was like he didn't have his visual aid to do this. You know. Anyway, we paid him a couple hundred pesos, and and uh, that was the end of that story. I want to stress that this was many, many years ago, and we don't pay mordidas anymore. It's frowned on. Uh, that doesn't mean it isn't occasionally uh, asked for, but certainly around here, around... Ahihik uh, and Chapala, they've, um, they highly discourage doing that anymore. So if you get stopped by an officer here, if you got a ticket, you probably deserve it. And um, if there's anything other than wanting to give you a ticket or a warning, just ask for the ticket. That's my experienced advice. We're at the north end of the main street through Chapala, and right over here on the left is where they have the Tiangas in Chapala, the street market, every Monday. If you have to actually go to the electric company, uh, it's right there. You turn right and then real quickly right again, and on to the end, you'll be at the CFE Electric Company if you need to actually do some business there other than just paying your bill. Up here we're going to get to Soriana. I talked about Soriana in my last video when I compared prices between it and Walmart from the Guadalajara Reporter and I referred to it as a big box store like Walmart but not Walmart. We're north of Chapala on the Libramento, which is a bypass coming south from Guadalajara. You get on a bypass, a shortcut that takes you to uh, Walmart and La Floresta, Ajijic, without going through Chapala and then along the lake. I just saw a sign back there for Tobolandia. Tobolandia is a water park with lots of big water slides and lots of swimming pools. It's across the street from Walmart and on the grounds of Tobolandia they have a couple of other things uh, off and on. One of them is the International Chili Cook-Off in February or March and another one is when the circus comes to town that's where it sets up because they have lots of room in their huge big parking lot at Tobolandia. This is a technological college here on the left, uh, closed. I don't think they're having classes because of the COVID. Coming up on the left here is the fire station. We don't have a lot of fires here because concrete, steel, and bricks and plaster don't burn very well. Uh, occasionally there's a house fire. We have some brush fires. In the month of May, when uh, it's hot and dry, we sometimes get fires going up on the mountains and there's no way for them to get up there and do anything about it so they just burn at night you can see the fires burning up there and they just burn till they get to the top of the hill and um, they can't do much about it 
we've made a circle from uh, Walmart, which is straight ahead, about half a block, to Chapala and north of Chapala, back on the Libramento to here. Central Magno on the left, uh, kind of a shopping center, food court in there, um, movie space, six screens, one of them is 3D. Uh, costs two, three bucks to go to the movies here, a lot cheaper than the United States, and so is the popcorn, a lot cheaper. As we get to the intersection up here at Walmart, we're going to turn right and go back into Ahihik. I'm now west of Ahihik, and I'm going to pull into the gas station here and get some petrol gasoline. Buenas tardes. Quinientos de Berry, por favor. It's customary to tip at the gas station. Well, I think I'm going to go over here and reward myself with an ice cream bar. We're going east back towards Ahihik. There's the Smokehouse Restaurant right there on the right. Best brisket uh, on the north shore of Lake Chapala. I'm going to stop here at the French Bakery. The French Bakery, I think it's run by some people who are actually from France. They were here and opened up the bakery and then they were gone for several months because they had some... Uh, immigration problems and then they came back and got the bakery going again anyway uh, this is one of me and Lynn's addictions the French bakery I decided since I have some pastries that I need to stop and get a half a gallon of milk just to make sure we have enough this is the little store called La Huerta which I think that means the orchard. So maybe it used to be an orchard, but right now it's a little grocery store. Home again with two huge pastries filled with almond cream. 78 pesos total, which would be about $3. Buck and a half, buck 60 a piece. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.